Good morning everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Now the other day I kind of got thinking about the early days of RuneScape uh, way back before I even played and what I'm talking about is the RuneScape Classic release day. I mean at the time I was uh, 6 or 7 and had never heard of the game before and I wouldn't go on to play it until RuneScape 2. And so today I wanted to kind of jump back in time and have a look at what day one of RuneScape would have looked like if you were transported back, god, 20 years now. Pretty much everything we know now is either different or not added yet. So I think this is going to be a lot of fun. If you do enjoy these types of videos, I would really appreciate it if you took a minute to go subscribe to my channel. And if you're feeling extra nice, go ahead and turn on those notifications so I can go ahead and harass you wherever you are at any time. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and let's get started. Now RuneScape was originally released to the public January 4th of 2001. And obviously back in RuneScape Classic, the map looked quite a bit different, but the map on release was very simplistic. The map on release only had really seven different locations on it. It of course had Lumbridge, uh, had the Lumbridge Swamp, there was the Draenor Manor, uh, the Wizard's Tower, there was the entire town of Varrock, the Barbarian Village, and something called Ghost Town, which would later be renamed to Edgeville. So there are some major things missing even in the free-to-play area. For one, there's nothing west of Draenor Manor. Uh, so there's no Falador, there's no Rimington, there's no Port Sarim. Other notable things missing is there is no Draenor Village. Alcarid is just a giant chasm, there's no city there at all. And of course a lot of other minor things are missing as well. Now one thing you might notice on this map is in Varrock there's a section for player-owned houses, uh, apparently coming soon. Now the houses in East of Varrock were actually supposed to be turned into player-owned houses, uh, but the release of those got delayed by five years. They would eventually be released with the construction skill, and the idea for them in Varrock did get scrapped. Now another pretty notable feature that you wouldn't actually find back in January of 2001 is a bank. You were not actually able to use a bank until a few weeks after the release of RuneScape, and even then, when banking was released, you were actually able to only store coins, uh, which is pretty inconvenient. It was actually to the point where people would make mule accounts just to hold on to their items for them, so they wouldn't have to risk all of their items all the time, and they wouldn't have to carry them around. Now, the very first bank to be added to the game was the West Varrock Bank, which I think iconically is still one of the most popular banks to hang out at, which I think is pretty cool. Now, if you were playing back in January 2001, and you wanted to go do something fun, you could go and do a quest. However, you wouldn't have a ton of options. At that time, there were only six quests added into the game. There was Cook's Assistant, which was one of the very first quests ever written for the game, Demon Slayer, uh, The Restless Ghost, Romeo and Juliet, Sheep Herder, and The Shield of Arav. Now more quests would be shortly added, but those were the only options if you were playing January 4th of 2001. Okay, so you just make a RuneScape account, you want to go ahead and start training your skills. Well, a lot of the free-to-play ones would be there, with two notable exceptions. You would not be able to fish anything because that skill had not been added yet, and you wouldn't be able to craft anything, because again, that would not be added for a few more months. Now, there would also be a couple of major differences to a few well-known skills. Now, first up here, the prayer skill, or formerly known as necromancy, would be divided into two different aspects, pray good and pray evil. Now, what exactly would this do? Well, it wouldn't really do anything, or at least not back in January of 2001. Back then, there was a way to train the prayer skill, however, there were no actual benefits to doing so. Pray good was the opposite of pray evil, and pray evil was the opposite of pray good. It really only existed to be somewhat of a moral compass. Now, notably, you could actually still train the skill by either burying bones or completing the Restless Ghost quest. However, no prayers were made available until the two aspects were combined together into what we know as just the prayer skill. Now another really major difference back then was the magic skill, uh, which similarly was divided into evil magic and good magic. Now evil magic would consist of the confused spell, which reduced your opponent's attack by 5%, similar to what we have now. Thick skin, which increased your defense by 5, which would go on to become a prayer. The shock bolt and elemental bolt spells, which were attacking spells. And there was even a fear spell which caused a monster currently engaged in combat to retreat. However, this had a whole host of issues. Being able to steal someone's monster that someone was attacking eventually led to the spell being removed. And there was also the good magic spells. There was chill bolt and wind bolt which were both attacking spells. Burst of strength which would later become a prayer. 
the camouflage spell which was never really programmed into the game properly. This would actually increase your hiding ability uh, which was originally intended to keep aggressive monsters away from you but they never ended up implementing it into the game and there was the rock skin spell which would give you a plus 10 defense boost. Now you're actually able to train these skills independent of each other and they were considered to be two skills at the time. Now later on when they just merged it into one magic skill they would take whichever level was higher if you had level 50 good magic for example and 40 evil magic your new magic level will then be 50. Okay, so you're walking around Gilanor and you want to go ahead and chop a tree. Well, there's only one option, and that is cutting a regular tree. A very interesting difference between the release of woodcutting and what it is today, you'd actually gain more woodcutting experience per regular log as you gained more levels. So for example, you'd gain vastly more experience from the same tree at level 70 than at level 1. Now if you wanted to go ahead and light one of those logs on fire, well you had the fire making skill which believe it or not was even more useless than it is today. Well as you could only cut down one type of tree, fire making didn't really have that much variety to it either. Back at the release there was only one type of log and that was normal logs which means that burning normal logs was your only option and similar to wood cutting you would have a scaling experience rate based on that. So you would gain vastly more experience as you gained more levels. Now cooking was another skill that was much more simplified as fishing had not been added to the game yet. Now when you think about cooking now, most of the things you cook are fish. So the only thing that you could cook back in January of 2001 was bread or different meat. Those were the only two categories of food items that you could actually cook. And once again, similar to wood cutting and fire making, the experience for cooking meat would depend on your player's cooking level so it would scale up. Now if you were walking around Varrock, you might actually see a couple different ores. Varrock being one of the first mineable areas in RuneScape. Now back then there weren't different tiers of pickaxes, you would just get an item called a pickaxe. Now compared to the other skills, mining and smithing were much more fleshed out. You were actually able to mine different tiers of rocks, and you were even able to smith them into a variety of different equipments. And even back then you were able to mine and smith up to adamant ore. The one notable exception was runite ore and runite equipment, which wouldn't be released until the summer of 2001. Beyond that, the only other notable things missing were dart tips, arrowheads, and knives. Now that made the melee combat style the most fleshed out. Uh, next was magic, and third we had ranged, which the only weapons available for ranged were short bows and long bows, and the only thing you could fire from them, bronze arrows. Now RuneScape would do incredibly well its first couple of weeks on the market. In two weeks, they managed to sign up 28,000 players, which is very impressive for a game at the time. And in just two weeks, there was a total playtime of 4.5 years. Now when you created your account, there was one major difference that we don't have today, and only existed until 2002, and that was the existence of classes. Now at the beginning of RuneScape, there were five different classes, the Warrior class, the Wizard class, the Adventurer class, and the Ranging class. Now the different classes would give you a different starting skill level and a different starting hit point level, as well as it would supply you with a few different items. For example, if you pick the warrior class, you'd start with level 3 attack, strength, and defense, and a hit points of 12. You'd also start with a bronze short sword and a wooden shield. If you pick the wizard class, you'd start with 7 magic. Later, the idea would be scrapped, and you would just have one basic class, which would be the adventurer, and you could do whatever you wanted. Now another really important thing you may have noticed when you were making your account is there was actually a selection to allow PvP or not. Uh, to my surprise, PvP actually has existed right from the beginning. However, you can only fight other players if both you and the other player chose PvP when you created your account. Now within even the very first month of RuneScape's release, there were a bunch of major changes. The first new area was added, which was Alcarid. Uh, with it came a new scimitar shop, a new mining area, a new general store, a new plate mail shop, and a new food item which was kebabs. Also the first new quest was added which was Ernest the Chicken. And RuneScape even experienced one of its first major bugs which was the kind of infamous beer glitch. Pretty much what happened there is players were pretty much able to infinitely drink beer which while only increased your strength level slightly each time stacked up players would become super powerful making yourself much stronger than you were meant to be. Also another fun little tidbit is you used to be able to log out while you were PvPing someone and you would just disappear. Uh, which I think is hilarious and that eventually did get fixed. So a lot has changed over the years but it's really interesting to look back at what actually stuck around. While yes a lot has changed, also a lot is the same. Anyway guys that is a quick look back at January of 2001 and what the game would have looked like back then. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, I would appreciate it. If you left the video, like, and I will see you next time.